some people don't believe that black people have 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 needs at different levels they're either shocked by it don't think you should have it so you have to think twice sometimes about what am i going to drive to this event bring sometimes about black americans other people of color when it comes to the perception of me. She literally just said that she doesn't want to have people over because both black and white people, I guess, look at her weirdly when they find out she's rich. Growing up as someone who, of means who is black, what is that like? What do you navigate specifically when you put those pieces together? The foundation of my childhood was largely in Texas. And where I lived in Texas, it wasn't all cacti and tumbleweeds. It was, a, it was a very, it was a very progressive, like rapid growing, new school after new school, shopping complex after whatever, like hospital, gas stations across the street from each other, like money. Kids get Mustangs and Camaros when they turn 16. Wow. Um, you know, and that was typical. Imagine getting a Mustang when you turn 16. Imagine getting a car when you turn 16. That wasn't, you know, anything out of the ordinary. Since that was the majority, it really wasn't that outstanding. I really don't think. What's not the, the you're saying that, that level, that class level. Class level, mm -hmm. yeah. I moved to Howard County, Maryland, um, my sophomore year of high school. And I could not believe, like, I didn't realize how big of a bubble I was living in. <laughs> because growing up, I thought the rest of the world was like a different flavor. She could not believe people were broke. <laughs> she couldn't believe that 16 rows didn't get Camaros and Mustangs when they were, when they were, uh, on their birthdays when, when they were, I reached that age, I guess. She just couldn't believe, couldn't fathom. <laughs> I'm just playing. I'm just joking around. All jokes aside, um, it's crazy that a lot of people grow up in that sheltered of a childhood where everything they want or everything that they, uh, that's good is just given to them. And I'm not saying everything was just given to her, but that's insane that you couldn't believe that, you know, every 16 year old didn't have a brand new car on their birthdays or that every school wasn't brand spanking new with a freaking food court in it. I, I don't know, I don't know, but it's just funny. Hey y'all, make sure y'all subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to subscribe for Frisco, Texas. Like I thought it was kind of the same, just like maybe a little bit of difference. Um, I pulled up to my high school. I couldn't even believe. I was like, where's the front of the building? I couldn't even. Students look like So what did you notice? Like most high school. Y'all see how those students was looking at her? <laughs> they was looking at her like, girl. Schools in Texas look like office buildings and it's very grand. Brand very, new. Yeah. Like nothing's bigger than, nothing's older than like 12 years old. Um, this school had been here in the 60s and I just didn't, it was just a very, very large adjustment. And I remember homecoming, this girl had offered to host. And when we were driving through her neighborhood, we were like, are we in the right place? Like I didn't even understand there were such vast differences in class, like in today's day and age. Like I was seeing houses and like things like, they weren't necessarily bad. They were just so much older. I didn't. I literally didn't think that they existed anymore. Like houses from what you would see in like Stranger Things. Like I didn't know that like those were still like existing. And so moving to an area like that, being someone that was considered a minority and also was, um, I guess you could say, a little more privileged in, in that realm, it was a little. a little bit more of a shock to more people. And I faced... Oh, they were shocked to meet you? Yeah, they were shocked. I mean, I had never been a part of so many conversations about money. Like, I learned... I discovered Wegmans when I moved there. And so, a lot of times... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so, a lot of times for lunch, I would pull out my salad that I got for, from Wegmans. And people would be like, $8 for a salad? And I'm like, yeah, like what? Like, I didn't know. And like, you know, turning 16, getting my license, I'm like, what car should I consider, guys? Like, cause, and I'm, I didn't even say that to like come off as pretentious. That was just such a common like conversation most people had at my age where I was from. People were like, why? Like they would laugh at me, like you expect to get a car. And I'm like, 
Yes. So are just one. Are you yeah. saying? So I'm just thinking of some things we've talked about, mm -hmm. or and you mm -hmm. refer to a little bit here. So in Texas. Mm -hmm. You were a minority in terms of color, but in yes. class, you were everybody yeah. was Nothing kind of, of on the, the same level. Mm -hmm. And did you feel like that flipped when you yeah, went to Maryland? Absolutely, yeah. And mm -hmm. that's something that I've told people. I think now, you know, being a black person in society was not nobody looked, nobody thought twice about. But the other side of it, like maybe the neighborhood I lived in, you know, like different things that I was exposed to, that was what was more shocking to the climate that I was surrounded by. And it wasn't a deal breaker. Like I still, uh -huh. you know, fit in and I made my friends and I love them to death and I still talk to them, but I did notice that mm -hmm. kind of shift. I'm kind of curious with the two of you as parents, but also just as- This is kind of insane when I hear it. Like even when I hear this and I grew up, I think I grew up pretty privileged. I'm not even going to lie to y'all. Um, I'm not going to sit here and act like I didn't, I don't know other people aren't as privileged. I know people aren't, other people aren't as privileged, but when I hear this, like you didn't even know houses that were built in the sixties still existed. Really? Like when I hear that, I'm like, okay, I don't even know what it's like to be that sheltered or that, you know, you know what? I'm not even, I'm gonna get for the benefit of the doubt. If you grew up in your entire life, you just, you know, were surrounded by super mega mansions that were all built in 2015 or later or 2010 or later or I don't know the years or and all the schools are super new. Then, OK, if you're not really on social media like that, then how could you know? But when you say that when you watch TV or when you go on the news, you don't see these houses like I don't know what to say, bro. I don't know what to say, man. Like, Wow. Wow. People from another generation, as you hear her talk about her experience, identity-wise, right, and cl with class and culture. What and, and especially given how it, and, I, and I'm trying to rupture this all the time in, in my work, like in this class, that there's just this sense, the conversation, the narrative is that black Americans are poor, mm -hmm. right? Black Americans are of lesser means. And so it's, I can imagine if I'm navigating that in my work, how, how are you, how do you all navigate that? How do you walk through that? You know, it can be tricky. Listening to Isabella reminds me, it's a common thing. Like you can, as a, uh, a black American who's, you know, worked and has some success, you can find your, you can find that you have no place to fit. Mm -hmm. Right? Because when you're in like Frisco, Texas, suburb of Dallas, you're a minority because of your race. Then, you know, when you move to a place like um, the Baltimore area, you might fit in more race wise, but then you're not then you're out of place because, you know, class wise, you're you don't fit with with many other people. So it can be, it can be tough to navigate. How do people let you know that you're out of place in the in each of those scenarios? Yeah, uh, I can tell you, like for me, um, I've always been a car enthusiast. My uncle was in the car. I grew up into cars, right? And so not long after I got out of school, I saved up my money and I got my dream car at the time. It was a Corvette. I always wanted one. And I remember, you know, um, the first time I... You saved up your money and got a Corvette? When I think of saving money, I think of like, you know, all the loose change you get, you keep it. But when you're, when you're able to save up enough money to get a Corvette, that's a nice job right there. That's a nice, that's a nice job, man. Kind of drove it back to where I was living. You know, people noticed it, but guess who was the first person to say something? Something rude. One of my black colleagues. What are you driving that for? What does that mean? He was like, you know, come on, who do you think you, like, you know, who do you think you are? Like, oh, and I was just like, no, this is what I like, you know? <laughs> so, um, so that's how they let you know, those kind of, uh, you know, uh, microaggressions. <laughs> <laughs> that, that come your you way from, both sides. from either side, yeah. right? And um, and so it can it can be a, it can be a, a tricky thread a needle to thread for us. Mm -hmm. um, I would say as as it relates to as the parent for Isabella, Isabella mentioned something about the exposure. So when you are functioning in different class levels or different means levels, you guys might know this. Kids travel all over the world, they take trips, they do everything, and that's kind of the norm. It's not really a super special thing to fly here or go there or, or, or what have you, um, or have a pool. Like, that's so basic. But like for some people, that's like 
some major thing having a pool. Um, what I was concerned about was the adaptability, I would say, for, for uh, our kids, the adaptability and the awareness. What? So exactly what Isabel is talking about, she wasn't sure of, that lack of awareness, sometimes kids don't understand why other kids are acting shady or acting weird, acting weird. It could be their own envy or it could be whatever they're dealing with. If you don't have the awareness, you don't understand. Ah, the old suffering from success. I love it. Like, and I'm not, bro. And I get it because if you work super hard and you're able to give your kids that lifestyle, yeah, other people are probably not going to understand your life. When you spend $8 on a salad or you get a car at 16, I'm sure a lot of other um, teenagers are, some of them aren't going to like you for it. Um, I don't think most people aren't going to like you for it. They're probably just going to be curious, like, what do your parents do? <laughs> but anyways, um, what I'm getting from this kind of though is the is like the suffering from success like we're just so successful rich that like other people just don't get us other black people don't get us and what i would um pose to this young woman and her family is if you didn't f um i guess fit in um i would say this there's always an area where you would fit in if that was your goal for example i grew up in prince george's county maryland if you all don't know, that's like, they call it the richest black county in the country or whatever. Um, if you really want it to fit in, fit in, and that's your crowd of people, you can move to a neighborhood like that or an area like that, but you decide to move to Howard County, Maryland. Um, I don't know much about Howard County. And I would also pose this to the um, other guy who saved up and bought a Corvette. It sounded like you did fit in, but you fit in with a culture of people that you didn't want to fit in with. So you kind of exile yourself from them to go to a different group of people. So all I'm saying is fitting in is not necessarily about race. And it's a little more about culture in a way. Um, so when you're trying to fit in somewhere, of course, you can consider race if that's what you want to do. But more, in my opinion, it's more so about what culture are you from? How did you grow up? You need to find people who relate to you on that level. But just looking out for people who, I guess, are the same skin color as you or whatever the case, whatever you're looking for, same gender as you, I don't know. That's kind of where you go wrong in this in this situation, in my opinion. And how to process that or navigate it. When you do understand it, you choose differently and you help or, or interact differently. Mm -hmm. Some people don't need to know all of your means. Mm -hmm. And I think I think kids sometimes share, you know, Everybody doesn't have to know everything about you. You have to wait and filter that. All of you in here need to know that for when you go to work. But even socially, when you're meeting people, tide, what is it, tide slow? Or do it slowly as you're sharing yourself, um, so, so, money or emotions. So, but can you say more about that specifically as black Americans, mm -hmm. right? So, because it, because it, it's, it's a thing that you all, you know, you're skating, you're in skating on ice. ice that's thinner yeah. in some way, yeah. right? Well, Tony, what about the fact that like Tony and I, we would joke around, but it was very true. We discovered years ago, we were like, we probably shouldn't have people over. Like people get weird when they come over and you're like, but that only happens in certain groups. Because Wait, they get weird because well, why? Because I think to your point, what? some people don't believe that black people have 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 means at different levels they're either shocked by it don't think you should have it so you have to think twice sometimes about what am i going to drive to this event because i think i'll drive the beater because i don't feel like going through all the drama that that people bring sometimes about black americans other people of color when it comes to the perception of me. And so when you say that people bring to it, you mean both white people and black and yeah, brown people. Yeah, I would altogether. say, I would say, I would say both. Um, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I think, oh, okay. I just want to ask a, re I, got, <laughs> I want to ask a related question. When you, when you think about what you learned about race, you know how you talked about when you came here, it was like, whoa, you know, different things your mind was, was open to yeah. and you understood uh, different stakes, things that were at stake. 
when you, there's this idea, I think, in what we're saying that if you're not poor or struggling, you're not black. Right. I, I, I oh, don't, yeah. I'm just, yeah. so, well, so I want like, oh, that's, wait, what? But she just said, she literally just said that she doesn't want to have people over because both black and white people, I guess, look at her weirdly when they find out she's rich. He, he literally asked that question. I'm not trying to go on her or nothing. I'm not trying to do that. But she literally just said that. She said, I, we can't have people over because people look at you differently because they don't expect black people to have money. And he said, uh, what type of people are looking at you differently? Are they, are they white people? Are they black people? She's like, yeah, they're both. But now she's kind of, she's trying to kind of, she's trying to kind of paint the narrative that this is like a race thing or, but if both races are looking at you weird, as you say, how could this be a race thing? It just sounds like to me, it's a rich, like you're just so rich that people, I guess, can't fathom how much money you have. I don't, I don't know what type of cars you drive. I don't know what type of house you live in. But all I'm saying is, if both, I guess, both races, you said this, are looking at you funny or looking at you weirdly, how could it be because you're black? Y'all get what I'm saying? Mm. Sounds white. And you're like, wait, because that was grammatically right? <laughs> right. That's really right. ignorant. Yeah, like, does, why would you say that? Yeah, yeah. right. So, I, so yeah. I wonder, so when you see your daughter growing up and not having to think about um, yeah, it's not, and, and being surrounded in a place where it's like, I don't know, I guess everybody talks about their car when they're 16 or whatever, the one they want. What do other people kind of pressure you to worry about in terms of what you might lose if you can't be, mm. I don't know, a part of the culture in some way? You know, that, that isn't necessarily because of wealth, but is somehow are you losing yourself are you yeah, saying like are yeah, you losing yeah is there something I don't think so no, i don't think yeah. you are but yeah. is there <laughs> is there some worry Society. that you would have for I, a, your I daughter or son i think i can probably answer that better than go they ahead. can go ahead um i you know i've i've heard that a lot i've heard the oreo thing i've heard you're like a white girl trapped in a black girl's body you're like a lot of people think that i wake up trying to achieve whiteness that is not like i never wake up and i'm like i want to look the closest to caucasian that's not that is never my motivation just because i wear lululemon or i wear my hair straight or you know i you know have more expensive tape like whatever why i guess like and my mom told this to me once like in the living room randomly why do white people get all the credit like just because it's nice just because it's upscale just because why is it white like who decided that mm -hmm. you know so and i and i don't think that like you know having different characteristics like that takes away from my blackness i still think i exude you know all the best parts of my culture and i still appreciate it um and i still live life as a black person i still experience and run into those roadblocks the same way what? um everybody else does what um, so it's i don't think it's so much okay i'm not trying to discredit what she's saying at all but i promise you i promise you actually i'm not gonna make that promise i can infer that you do not run into the same roadblocks as other people run into people don't people who have wealth don't really understand how much wealth helps your life and the reason i can say that about um, i guess this particular young woman is because before the age of 16 before when she was moving different schools she said she moved when she was a sophomore so you're 15 years old she didn't even know houses existed that were built in the, in the 1960s she didn't even she couldn't even fathom that people weren't living in new brand new mansions she couldn't even fathom that people weren't driving cars when they were 16. so for you to sit here and say you deal with the same roadblocks that other people deal with i'm not saying you don't deal with roadblocks but you do not you do not deal with the same roadblocks that majority of americans deal with you don't i'm not even gonna lie like some people don't know where their next meal is coming from they don't know how they're gonna send their kid to college they have an extremely intelligent daughter or son who's probably a genius and they don't know how they're gonna pay for their college if they even, they don't know. They don't know how they're going to make it out of their situation. They don't know how they're going to pay for Christmas gifts coming up because it's already November. Christmas is next month. They don't know. So for you to say you deal with the same struggles that majority of people deal with, I promise you don't. 
And you will, yes, you are an African American young woman. You do probably deal with struggles, but you do not deal with the struggles of majority of Americans. You don't. And living in that bubble, I guess, as, as you call it, will probably make you think that your struggles are the biggest struggles, but they are not. People are struggling on levels that you cannot comprehend. Much that they have to worry about me losing myself, I think it's more people realizing that you don't know someone upon first impression. Yeah, you can't true. look at somebody and you know make assumptions and assume that you know things based off of false narratives or various stereotypes that you've preconceived. You don't know who somebody is until you get to yeah, know them. Yeah, that, to me, that's why this is really such a valuable conversation because we cannot, first off, half of all black Americans are middle class. And of the other half, you have wealthy black Americans, then you have poor black Americans. And like, but we're stuck in a narrative that we cannot get out of that black equals poor, which is what I, what I said earlier. And like, and the problem is, if we're not engaging, if we're not crossing over, it's kind of like, if we're, not, if, if we're not traveling, right? We can talk about Japan, but if you haven't been to Japan, if you haven't walked the streets of Tokyo or Osaka or somewhere, like you just, you just can't, you don't feel like the Middle East, right? You and this is what I say when I make these type of videos, that when you're told a narrative that you are, how do I even put this? I don't even know how to put this. When you are told a narrative that you are a naturally born victim in society, and society tells you that you are a victim, you are a victim this, but you grow up, and you are literally privileged. Like you grow up, you have money, you don't have to worry about anything, you have an extremely good childhood, but you're still told this narrative that you are a victim. It kind of puts you in a weird situation where you have a good life, but you're told that you're a victim. So you kind of try to find out what exactly you are and why you have this good life. You still tell yourself that, yeah, maybe I am a victim. Maybe this is the worst that life can get. And the reason that this is so dangerous because it kind of puts the people who are actually dealing with real life threatening issues in a worse position. Because if you believe that your position is the worst it, it could possibly be in life, but you're rich or you have an amazing family or you have this or you have that, that you're just going to completely ignore the people who are actually struggling, trying to grind their ways up. You're going to completely pretend like they don't exist. Unfortunately, like this young woman did. She was told her life that because she's a African-American young woman, I don't know exactly what she's told. I'm not even going to guess that. I'm not even going to guess. But from what I'm hearing, um, she still believes that she is in a, you know, place of victimization, but she is rich. So what does this tell her? That people below her just don't exist. She believes that she could possibly be the lowest form of human or form of a form of oppression in the country i don't know the exact term so the people who are below her or who are actually dealing with different struggles she just pretends or not even pretends that's not even the right word they don't exist in her mind they don't like i'm not trying to bash her because this is not her fault and i'm not trying to hope y'all bash her but this is what happens when you tell privileged people that they are not privileged they can't even see that they're privileged because you keep telling them that they're dealing with stuff, that they're going through stuff, that they're doing this, that they're, and they're like, maybe I am, but they're not. So stop telling people that it's dangerous. And, you know, socioeconomic class. Yeah. I yeah. think they are now two distinct types of challenges we all face. Mm -hmm. I love the, the, if you could go back to the story of, do you like, like, do you, for example, Isabella, when you're going to certain places, do you not wear some clothes? Do you like, okay, I can't wear that. I can't, I can't. No, you mean I'm, my mom is she, very much like that. Like, no. I can't carry my bag or whatever. I don't care. I don't, and so no. What I'm do you like would that. say you don't because it's yeah. what you said earlier, like driving, do we just drive the beater and then yeah. no one's gonna judge well, us? I, I was, uh, that that was years ago when we had okay, that conversation. Right. Um, when you had a beater. Yeah, when right? I, I still <laughs> have one. Yeah. By the way, if you're if you're not if English isn't your first language, a beater is a kind of a broken like my, down car. Yeah, like go yeah, right. drive that to the business meetings. But um, no, I don't. Now I don't. I I don't do that. 
But I would, I would suggest that sometimes because you guys know kids are interesting. Like kids, like middle school, high school, college even. I don't know. These kids in here seem so young to me. I'm sorry. But I'm like, they're so, they're so young. But you guys know how it is. Sometimes in your social circles, you can authentically be your full self. And your full self might be the bag or not the bag or whatever it is. You can be your full self. And then there are other times when you know, like, oh, I can't fully share that. I'm just saying from an African-American woman, over the years, I've been cautious and smart about how I showed up. Uh -huh. So if we're talking about, like, bags or shoes, you know, sometimes you, you need to be low-key. Yeah. Okay. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end this video here. I would say this. I fully understand where she's coming from. I really do. And I'm not gonna sit here and, and bash or talk about this woman or her life experiences. All I will say is, don't try to victimize yourself as if what you're dealing with causes it as if what you're dealing with is one of the lowest forms of, I guess, oppression in the country. Um, when you say as an African-American woman or as a black this or as a, as a, you know, when you say certain phrases like that, it kind of alludes to systemic racism or alludes to a level of racism in, in your life. And the reason that I think that is dangerous is because you are an extremely wealthy woman. You had a good life, it seems. I don't know exactly, but it sounds like you had a good life. And you ha obviously live a very affluent life still. And you live such an affluent life that your daughter lives her affluent life without even having to work a job yet. She has a car. She has bags. She can spend money however she wants. So when you live a life like that, I don't think it's healthy or right to sit on stage and be like oh as a black you know as a black person i just can't be myself you can be yourself you can be yourself you're everything will be fine but yeah let me know y'all thoughts in the comments uh i'm gonna finish this video right here this is this is very interesting um it's up for judging i'll see you guys